My journey started on the 12th of October 2020. I was at Addenbrooke's A&E and I must have looked particularly unwell because it was the height of lockdown. I recall seeing a huge queue of people outside the department and yet the nurse took one look at me and I was immediately fast-tracked all the way through into a, a cubicle of my own. Now the reason I was there was that within a couple of hours of finishing my dinner, I began being sick in an uncontrollable and continuous manner. And my partner, who's a GP, knew that something wasn't right and, 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 and took me to the hospital. Thankfully, the doctors were amazing at bringing the sickness under control and I was then shipped off for a CT scan. Now, prior to this, about seven days earlier, I'd developed a tenderness in my abdomen on the right-hand side, and I'd been to see my doctor, had some blood tests, they were normal, and he'd referred me for, for an ultrasound. So for me, the CT scan was gonna be really helpful in, in quickly assessing what was going on, but nothing could prepare me for what the doctor said when he returned to the cubicle. He began by saying, Mr. Garrett, I'm really, really sorry. And at that point, I knew the news was going to be difficult. He proceeded to explain that the scan showed that there was a tumour blocking my ascending colon. It had grown outside of the bowel and had spread at the right-hand side of my body. And in his opinion, he was almost certain that this was cancerous. It, it was as if for me, I'd become disconnected from reality at that point as I tried to process what he was saying. I couldn't understand how being young, I was very, very fit. I ate a really healthy diet, had a good work-life balance. It just didn't make sense to me as to how I could have cancer. But, but secondly, it, it, it awoke past trauma in my life because in 2015, in quite similar circumstances. I was with my wife in hospital when she had a scan that showed she had advanced breast cancer. And that was an illness that then claimed her life in, in 2018. And it was a journey I'd walked with her. And I couldn't comprehend how I now faced the same fate. And he left me to, 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 to comprehend and, 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 and work through these thoughts. And being a person of faith, I prayed. And my prayer was really simple. It was, God, give me a second chance at life. That was pretty much all I could muster. And amidst all of the, the confusion, the anxiety, the turmoil in my mind, this, this peace and assurance came and filled my heart with a sense that everything was gonna be okay, despite my lived experience telling me the opposite. And I, and I recall just, just grabbing hold of this, this, this sense of assurance. And it was that, I think, that really got me through that first night in, in the hospital. I held on to, I clung to it with all of my strength. And the next day is really when my, my treatment began. My treatment came in, first, in four parts. The first was surgery, 8.30 in the morning, I was in, in theater. By the afternoon, I was back on the ward. A junior doctor who'd been following my journey came and told me the funny story of how under the influence of the helpful drugs that they give you in recovery, I'd made a number of people laugh because I was asking anyone and everyone whether or not I had a stoma and was frantically feeling my abdomen for any signs of a stoma. And I didn't have a stoma. My surgeon later came to tell me that, about the procedure, how successful it was and, and how he'd managed to, to, to reconnect me uh, internally. So I was then shipped off home pretty quickly because of the risk of COVID in the hospital. And I recovered at home for two weeks. I was then back in the hospital for another scan just to assess the success of the surgery and whether there was any other cancer. And I went back then a very short time afterwards for the results with my colorectal surgeon. And it, I remember it being a really difficult meeting because it was as if I've already relived a nightmare. I'd been through one nightmare with my late wife with cancer. I was now having to go through cancer and I felt like this is as bad as it as surely it gets. And he sat us down, my, my partner and I, and proceeded to explain that there was more difficult news. 
And the difficult news was, was that cancer had in fact spread to my liver and they were concerned that it may have spread to the peritoneum on the left side. But he very quickly said, but there is some positive news and the positive news is both areas uh, can be operated on and removed. So he said, really what we need to do now because of that is focus on preventing the cancer from, from returning anywhere in your body where we, we can't operate. So it is chemotherapy is the next is the next phase and we left that meeting and I realized pretty quick the first lesson was you you know it's, for me it was really important to focus on the positive and not the negative so focus on the positive and thought right let's let's pursue the, the, the chemotherapy so so six weeks now after my surgery in October I was in the chemotherapy ward and I was having two very common chemotherapists for bowel cancer patients that was oxaliplatin and capcitabine now, I had four cycles of this chemotherapy and it was difficult, but after the fourth cycle, I, I became very, very ill and a scan and a biopsy of my liver showed that I had a reaction called SOS, Sino-Occlusive Syndrome. It's a very rare reaction to the oxaliplatin in which the liver is, is injured. And and that was again really difficult but there was some positive news because they scanned me while i was back in hospital and found out what happened to my my liver the scan also showed that the the, the chemotherapy had been very very effective in shrinking the tumor in my liver and there was now nothing visible at all in my peritoneum on the left hand side so again i was kind of in this, this situation where it was really rare it confused the doctors as to what was happening to me but at the same time, as difficult as that was, there was some positive news. The chemotherapy had been effective. So I kind of clung on to that. And within seven days, they'd managed to, 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 to reduce the symptoms and my liver had recovered and I, I returned home. So about four weeks after that, so we're, we're kind of now in May 2021, I'm then in Basingstoke Hospital seeing their liver team for surgery. And they carried out full open surgery to remove the cancer that was in my liver and to explore what was happening in the peritoneum on the left hand side. So when I returned to the ward, my surgeon came to see me quite promptly with, with, with amazing news that the surgery was successful. They removed the, the cancer with good margins, but they also confirmed that there was absolutely nothing of note in the left hand side of my peritoneum. And mentally and psychologically for me, that was probably a turning point because he was saying, look, there is no cancer that's visible to us now in your body. And I recall at that point, like this switch in my mind of saying, right, the doctors have played their part. I now need to play mine. I need to be like an active participant in my own recovery. So I began setting myself small goals. And the first one was to get out of hospital as quickly as I could. And within three days, I collected my letter from the hostel, my discharge letter, and walked down to reception myself with my suitcase and went off home with my, uh, my, my partner. And so that was like an amazing outcome. And I kept setting myself these little goals to get myself as fit and as strong as I could for the final stage of my treatment, which was more chemotherapy. So this time it was, a, it was at four cycles of capcitabine on its own. And again, it was, it, was, it was tough, but not as difficult as before. And when I finished the capcitabine, I went for a, a scan. And the scan was to see whether or not the treatments had been effective and what the state of the situation was in my body. And the results were booked for the 11th of October, the day after my 40th birthday. And I remember, I think it was 4.20, and I was sat on my computer because it's still locked down and I'm staring at my screen, waiting for my oncologist to appear, which he did with the amazing news that there was the, the scan showed that there was no cancer in my body. And since then, I've had my second scan, which also shows again, there's no cancer in my body. Now, this is a journey of scans over the next five years, but I'm remaining confident, prayerful, and I'm trusting that that assurance, that sense of things are gonna work out will actually be true for me and that I will get to the end of the five years and still be, be cancer free. So life for me now, in some ways, is, is very similar to before. In that, I've returned to full-time work, which is going well. 
I'm back at the gym regularly. I'm playing tennis just as badly as I played before down at my local club. But mentally, I think my approach to life is very, very different. I now live in today and not in tomorrow and not in yesterday. I live for the here and now. And in maximizing each day, I've learned the importance of setting goals, no matter how small, and hitting those goals and seeing the, the, how, how positive and encouraging that makes you, you feel. And, and the final thing I think that's different is that I really think about what I'm thinking about. I really uh, keep a check on where my mind is going and I focus on the positive rather than the negative. And I've, and I've learned to live and enjoy life in the tension of having a scan every three months and then waiting three weeks for, for, for the results with my, my oncologist. And, and I found a way of thriving in the midst of that. And I've had other people kind of come to me and say, look, I'm going through some life stuff. What have you learned? And, and sharing learning and encouraging other people. And I've enjoyed this so much that whilst I was off work and recovering, I did a life coaching course to learn how to more formally walk alongside other people in their journeys and trials to, to encourage and help them. And so I've, I think I've learned that inside each and every one of us, there's, there's extraordinary, often untapped potential to not only to, to recover, but to transform in relation to the, the trials and challenges that we face in life. And now I give my time to that very end and I absolutely love it.